So put some respect on Travis Kelsey before we have to find you and smack some respect into you. Welcome back to another edition of All Chiefed Up, where we do Kansas City Chiefs news, analysis, and more. I'm Steve, and I'm here with Mike, and today Kansas City proved that they're still the kings of the AFC, and we're going to talk about it. But first, smash that like button if you like the content. If you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification. If you've been here before, we appreciate you being back. Let's jump right into this. Chiefs Kingdom Week 1 is in the books. Kansas City comes out on top, 44-21 over the Arizona Cardinals. It was light work out there, man. The Chiefs just looked like they were rolling all day, right, Mike? The Cards are not a pushover team. Now, granted, they had a little bit of injury. They had a little bit, you know, of of all that going on. But who don't? And we demolished the the Cardinals. We made it look easy. Um, It don't matter who we had on the field at any given time. They went out. They played well. They dominated. Uh, Easy victory in week one, if I do say so myself. Absolutely. It was it was awesome. It was really good to sit there and watch just a stress-free week one beat down and just prove everybody wrong. It's been talking trash about the Chiefs all year. Mahomes come out scorched earth like we said that he would, and then everybody else in Chiefs media said the same thing last week. Yeah, so we had called that months ago. Apparently, everybody else just got the memo like last week. But uh, we knew it was going to happen. We said that Mahomes would not struggle without Tyreek Hill one bit. Every ESPN analyst, every pundit, Every podcast, every idiot out there that said that he was going to struggle without Tyree Kill can now officially suck, suck it. it. Suck it. That was not planned either. We said suck it at the same time because that's just what they need to do. That's what you got to do. Just suck it. Uh, observation number one from this week, man. Mahomes and the offense, they look like they did not miss a step in the offseason. We didn't know what they were going to look like, but we said, hey, they're going to look okay. Mahomes is going to be able to distribute the rock to everybody he wants to, not just focus on Tyreek Hill. Dare I say we looked a little better this season than last season because there wasn't tunnel vision straight to Tyreek Hill because he wouldn't stop crying in the huddle to get the ball. Mahomes was spreading the ball all around the field. The run game actually looked decent. Clyde performed well, Pacheco performed well, and Jarek McKinnon performed well. So I noticed that Reed did split up all three of those backs. They all got a lot of work. All of them looked good. All the receivers looked good. No one on the offense looked bad today. No, I thought the receivers all looked pretty good. Juju in his debut looked pretty good. Um, He did have that late fumble, but it didn't cost us anything there at the, the end of the first half, I believe. Um, Other than that, everybody done what they needed to do. Sky Moore even had a nice catch there. I think it was 30-some yards. Um, We all looked good, and you touched on a little bit. That brings us to point number two. Every skill player out there, be it MVS, be it Juju, all the new pieces, be it Pacheco, whoever it was, every skill player contributed, and they all looked pretty good. They all looked really comfortable, and it is week one, so this is only going to get better, folks. Like, this is week one. Everyone thought it would take a while for these guys to get comfortable and start gelling together, but this looked like a well-oiled machine right off the bat. Andy Reid's game plan was excellent. It worked perfect, and these guys were executing, which is exactly what we said they needed to do to take this game. Yeah, like we're not naive enough to think that they could keep this up. They're still going to hit slumps and bumps along the way. But today, you couldn't have asked for a better start to this offense, and I thought it looked beautiful. Right, and I don't think it's the ceiling. I do not think it's the ceiling for this team. They can be even better than what you saw today. Okay, so let's get into the defensive side of the ball. That brings us to point number three. I thought the pass rush looked pretty good. Kyler Murray is a hard QB to track down. He's a hard QB to defend and keep in the pocket. We've done a pretty good job. We actually had three sacks on the day. I believe it was Wharton. Um, I believe it was Dunlap. And I think Sneed got it on a corner blitz one time. That was it. That was it. Yeah, and I thought they looked really good. I I thought that the pass rush was serviceable, and I was actually impressed with George Karloftis. He never really got to um, Kyler Murray at all, but George Karloftis was in his face. He had a big knockdown of a pass there. Um, he looked pretty dominant at times. He looked almost unblockable at times. Right, and the rest of the guys did pretty good at containing Kyler Murray when he flushed out of the pocket. There were some chunk plays, which we knew that was going to happen because he's fast and you can barely see the guy anyway over the defensive and offensive line. So you know that's going to happen. But, I mean, they did a really good job of containing him. He didn't go crazy or anything. It didn't hurt us in the long run. But, I mean, yeah, we definitely got consistent pressure throughout the day. And, once again, that's something that's going to improve through the season. Yeah, I thought Chris Jones got to him a few times. Of course, it was tough to hit him. I don't think Jones could get himself low enough to the ground to actually grab the little guy. But other than that, he had a lot of good pressure. I thought Frank Clark looked pretty good at times. Mike Dana impressed me today. Mike Dana looks pretty good. Like, his development's coming along. 
Um, he should get to that eight or nine sack mark as he predicted he would. I think he'll get there. He looked pretty good today. It's possible, but is it not straight comedy to watch Kyler Murray play football out there? Guys, it looks like someone snuck in from the Pee Wee League and just playing quarterback. Like every time they show like a, a wide view of it and it shows like the entire offensive line and then him, it's so funny, dude. It's just, I can't help but laugh. Dude, he is so short. I don't think he <laughs> doesn't watch film. I just think he can't see the play develop in front of him. The only yeah. thing he can see is to just chuck it up or to just look in his peripheral over to the uh, dump down and just throw dump downs all day, which is I what think, he did. I think that's why he has a tendency to roll out and get out of the pocket. That way he can see. Because if he stays in the pocket, I don't think he can see. That's, yeah, that's I, legitimate. I don't think they should have gave him all that money. I don't think Kyler Murray's a top five quarterback in this league. I'll no. I'll say it forever. I don't think he is. I'd rather have Lamar Jackson. Absolutely not. Kyler Murray's not a top five quarterback. All right, let's move on to that number four. Okay, number four. It was a lot of garbage time yardage and a lot of garbage time touchdowns there, scoring from Arizona. So I won't be too hard on him, but I do believe my um, number four observation will be the secondary does need a little more time to gel and a little more time to figure this out. Um, we've seen Jalen Watson get, get beat on a touchdown play and then get beat on the very next two-point conversion. Um, I thought Trent McDuffie looked okay, but Snead and Fenton were allowing catches all day and just tackling. I think those two were actually in the top – they were the second leading tackler and the third leading tackler was Fenton and Snead. I don't know if you want your corners to be the second and third leading tackler behind, obviously, Nick Bolton, who should be at the top of your leading tackler. Right. Nick Bolton looked excellent, as usual. Uh, he didn't do anything crazy. He wasn't, like, flashy, but he did his job. Cornerbacks could definitely use a little bit of work. There were times when there were people wide open out there, and it was just some pitch and catch plays. I don't know if they'd missed some assignments or if it was just a bad scheme or what it was, but definitely looked like they could use some work. And – once again, like you mentioned, uh, Jalen Watson, he got beat by Hollywood Brown, and then he, you know, he got beat on the two point conversion as well. Why don't we put Jalen Watson in that situation where he's trying to cover Hollywood Brown anyway? Because I mean, that's just we. That's one knock we've had on this guy all the time is he plays a little slow, and then we got the fastest receiver on that team. That just seemed like a bad mismatch, and he just couldn't keep up with him. And that's how that touchdown got scored. Right. They're clear cut number one going against our seventh round pick who barely squeezed on the team. That makes a lot of sense. But at least you got some uh at least you got some footage of it. He got some experience under his belt. I thought Jalen Watson did hold his own a lot. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody struggled that bad today. This was a dominant performance. I thought our defense looked really good. Um, we thought they were gonna take a few weeks to jail, but going against this Arizona Cardinals offense, it's not a bad offense per se. So I thought they'd done pretty good. And basically they had you know, Arizona with just seven points for the majority of the game for probably like 85, 90% of the game. Yeah, I thought everyone looked solid. I'll give some props to Juan Thornhill. I thought he looked good today. He was flying around everywhere. He had like one missed tackle that was a little ugly. But other than that, I mean, he was on the ball, man, playing hard, playing fast. So, yeah, I was pretty happy as a whole because this defense, we already said it's going to take like six to eight weeks for them to hit a good stride. And for them to come out today and look pretty good against a decent offense, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, so getting into number five, I think the, the the biggest observation I can take out of this at number five has to be that Harrison Butker ankle injury. I don't know if that was the same ankle he's been nursing this whole preseason. I think it was. I'm not for sure. But either way, what is it with these million-dollar teams and billion-dollar franchises, and they can't take you know a couple million dollars and make their field look good? Like It's just a bunch of trash out there. It's like we're on ice. Yeah, that really reminded me of that preseason game in Chicago. Like, the field was terrible. Our guys were slipping everywhere. Turf was coming up. It was just bad. And I'm with you. I don't understand why these teams, they are I mean, they're billion-dollar corporations, and they can't have a good field. It makes no sense to me. It's stupid. And, yeah, uh, we got to do something about that ankle because it is nice to have Justin Reed in there that can, you know, he's going to kick and get you a touchback and stuff like that, but he's not an accurate kicker. He's not going to come in and kick your field goals. We saw that on the extra point that he, you know, booted out to the right by like 30 yards. Right. Sometimes you have to rely on Butker and that field goal and, you know, that three points, that's big sometimes. Coming up on Thursday night, this is a short week. We got to get Butker ready somehow because you may have to come down to, to you know, a, a late field goal to be in it or to tie it. And, yeah, so I think that's something we got to focus on. But that was the big thing, you know, all the talk about Reed. We even laughed in the game. We were like, is Reed sitting around somewhere at home, like doing some voodoo on Butker's ankle, you know, so he can get out there and kick a little bit? Ever since we saw Reed kicking in training camp, it's like there's been something wrong with Butker. Like, 
here and there and everywhere. And it's like, just so we can squeeze into the game. Uh, so yeah, he's putting a hex on him. And Justin, we're going to have to ask you to stop doing Dude, that, please. We're out here praying for Butker's ankle. He's cursing our prayers with voodoo so he can get out there and kick some extra points. He's got Joe Boo in the locker room, bro. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball? Hey, Justin, tone it down, bro. We don't have to have you kicking all the time. Quit cursing our kicker, bro. Yeah, but you alluded to it. Thursday night's game could be a close one. The Chargers have put up, they've beat the Chiefs three out of the last four times in Arrowhead Stadium. So it could be a close game, and you definitely want your kicker at 100% in games like that because it, you know, it could come down to it. Okay, so before we wrap this up, we made a few predictions. We both predicted the Chiefs would win. Uh, neither one of us predicted it would be such a blowout. I don't think we all thought it was going to be that easy. But I will say, oh, Steven over here or here, I don't know which way he is. But either way, this guy called Mahomes would have four touchdowns and I think 400 yards. He got pretty close. Mahomes finished the day with five touchdowns and 360 yards. And by the way, he was pretty accurate, you know, for all the two is more accurate talk. Um, I think Mahomes was 30 for 39, which was actually more accurate than two on the day, by the way. Man, you mentioned Tua, but all these quarterbacks. Josh Allen looked bad at times in that Buffalo game. He threw a lot of interceptions. Joe Burrow looked like the garbage that he is today. It was absolutely terrible. Uh, if you're anywhere in our area, you had to suffer through the end of that game with the Bengals and the Steelers. Those two teams both looked like complete garbage. It was a nightmare to watch. And we we're just waiting to watch the Chiefs and the Cardinals game. CBS was just killing us. Dude. But yeah. We were so dominant, we had scored 14 points before these dudes could kick a field goal. <laughs> like, how so bad, bad are these two? But my point that I was getting to is all these quarterbacks that are supposed to be so much better than Patrick Mahomes go out and struggle in the first week and look, you know, good here, but bad there and everything else. And Mahomes just come out like it was nothing, didn't even break a sweat, throws for five touchdown passes, look completely dominant. Uh, yeah, that risk kind of uh, worries me a little bit, though. Hopefully that's something that won't be lingering. Uh, granted, it's not like a huge thing because it's not his throwing hand. But he did get hit too much today. I will say that. I didn't like how much he got hit today. And then going back to my prediction, I said Clyde would be the uh, MVP of the day. Probably not. I think we're going to give it to Mahomes. He had such a big game. But Clyde did look pretty good. Clyde had um, seven carries for 42 yards, and he chunked off an 18-yard run, looked really good one time. He also had three catches for 32 yards with a long of 25 and two receiving touchdowns. So Clyde did get the two touchdowns that I called, so we were both correct, Steve. Give us a, a round of applause, buddy. We hit the nail on the head there. Pretty good. We did pretty good. So there's another injury that we did not mention. Trey Smith's out with an ankle injury as well. I don't know if it got rolled up on or maybe it was that crappy field he was playing on. I don't have a clue, but there's another ankle injury. So we had Butker, we had Trey Smith, both have injuries. Uh, hopefully they can get back 100% before this game on Thursday. Yeah, and I think the one last thing I want to call out, besides our, our receivers looking pretty good, MVS Juju looked pretty good. Um, I think uh, Juju had six receptions for 79 with a long of 20, and then MVS had four for 44 with a long of 17. So they both look pretty good. But the one guy I want to kind of call out is Travis Kelsey, man. Still the best tight end in football. He had eight catches for 121 and a touchdown with a long of a 35. And let me tell you yeah. something. George Kittle's supposed to be better. This guy, where's he at? Not even playing. He's on the bench injured. Playing again. Madden. Yeah. Yeah, like this guy sucks. And you all say he's better than Kelsey every year. And all Kelsey does is come out and put up 100 and a touchdown every week. So put some respect on Travis Kelsey before we have to find you and smack some respect into you. Yeah, no kidding. And not to mention that a lot of his workload was peeled off between Noah Gray and Jody Fortson today. If they were still going to Kelsey as much as they usually are, he could have had a monster day. I, I just want to say, though, it's just amazing that a team that was just so hindered by Tyreek Hill and we just didn't even know how to score. And I mean, if Tyreek was on this team today, we may have scored 180, according to the media, you know? Yeah, so Tyreek got what he wanted. He's over in Miami. Uh, getting the ball thrown to him 85 times a game, but didn't mount to anything. Uh, no. I think they might have won today, but it's not like they went out and slaughtered somebody or did anything important. He didn't have a crazy good game or anything like that. It was just a product of getting the ball 85 times in his hands, but he's getting what he wanted and we're getting what we need. So yeah. I, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, I think I, I much rather would prefer this offense and the way we look today to the way we look for the past few years. I felt over the past few years, we were starting to get a little stale, a little stagnant. Um, everything was starting to be forced. We were, we were having to like play this with this too deep 
thing and and had to game plan around Tyreek and Tyreek had to touch it and this and that. And our offense just looked like we did not stall out at all today. Mahomes looked free to throw it to anybody he pleased. And we looked really good. I liked the way we looked. And again, not saying we're going to be perfect. We're still going to stumble a little bit. But overall, I was pleased. I give the offense a fat A plus for the day and I give the defense a solid A. This was an overall good team performance and a very good week one. Absolutely. I mean, we have a better receiving core than we've ever had in in the Mahomes era. I don't care what anybody says. This is the most complete one. And it looked like it had the defense on skates out there at times because they didn't have a clue where the ball was going. We didn't even know where the ball was going to be going. And it was just so many options for Mahomes. If he can make sure to keep his options open and get through his reads, I think he's going to have an awesome season, man. Yeah, I do too. Okay, man, that's going to wrap it up for the day, I think. Um, you guys tune in tomorrow. We're going to do a little player spotlight on Justin Reed. All right, Chiefs Kingdom, do you think the Kansas City Chiefs did enough today to still be considered the kings of the AFC? If so, put it down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the content today. If you're not a subscriber yet, get down there and hit that subscribe button right now. We're trying to get to 5K before the season ends, and we're going to need your help. So utilize that share button down there. Share this on your social media. Also, any super thanks over $4.99, and we are going to send you a keychain and a sticker. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get notifications when we come out with new content. Okay, Chiefs Kingdom, that's going to do it for today. Tomorrow's the player spotlight, Justin Reed. And then we got Chiefs Chargers, five keys to victory Monday on Wednesday. Yeah, and you might wonder where that leaves our weekly Wednesday roast. Hang around till next Monday, and we'll probably get that one up because Joe Burr deserves it. Yeah, I think so. We'll see you guys. I, 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 I,